Hi, and welcome to another Donald P. Belisario College of Communications digital video tutorial. For this tutorial, let's look at using a digital DSLR to shoot video. So how do we set up a camera like the D7500 for video? What are the specific settings and adjustments that we should be making to get the most out of our camera? And what are the advantages and disadvantages of using this camera for video? It doesn't look like a video camera. It doesn't always act like a video camera. So why use it for video at all? This tutorial assumes you're familiar with the basic functions of the camera and are familiar with the basic terminology surrounding a DSLR. If you're not, I'd encourage you to watch earlier videos in this tutorial series before diving into shooting video. Let's talk first about the advantages a DSLR brings to the video table. It really is all about one advantage, sensor size. The sensor, that is the chip that records the image, is the single most important factor in image quality. And all other things being equal, the larger the sensor, the better the image quality. Yes, of course, other factors are important, the circuitry and software, the way the sensor is made, the lenses, software, etc. But everything else being equal, a larger sensor will give you better image quality. And compared to a traditional video camera, the sensor on the D7500 is huge. In fact, it's about the same size as the film used to make Hollywood films. You can see a comparison in the chart. More expensive DSLR cameras like the top-of-the-line Nikons and others have sensors that match 35mm still cameras, and they're called full frame. The D7500 uses a smaller sensor that is still much larger than the sensor in your phone or point-and-shoot cameras or even many professional or, or semi-pro video cameras. This larger sensor gives the camera the ability to gather more light, giving better image quality. It also allows for shallower depth of field, a look that is often cinematic in appearance. So the camera gives great image quality. You can shoot in low light. You can create shallow depth of field for a certain look. All of this adds up to why many people are using DSLRs for video production and why there is a new generation of video cameras with larger, more DSLR-like sensors. So why not go out and buy one of those new video cameras? If you plan to only shoot video and you have the budget, I'd say go for it. Cameras like the Canon C300, among many others, are a beautiful video camera. And they cost somewhere around $10,000. That's the other advantage of the DSLR for video. As expensive as the camera might seem to you, it's very inexpensive compared to a dedicated high-end video camera. And it shoots still pictures, and it does that spectacularly well. So for one price, you get a great still camera and a camera that can, with some effort, shoot beautiful video. The downsides? First, handling. The D7500 is designed to be handheld for still imagery, not video. That means you either need to invest in very complicated and expensive rigs to handhold the camera, or use a tripod. For class, plan on using a tripod for all your video work. Second, focusing. Autofocus for still photography is again spectacular on the camera. It is fast and accurate. In live view, while shooting video, not so much. The autofocus is slow and the noise of the motor turning and whirring will end up in your video. You'll need to manually focus the camera while shooting video. And then there's sound. The built-in microphone on the camera is, well, politely not very good and good sound will make or break a video. Capturing high quality, rich, clear audio is not really an option. Luckily, the camera allows you to plug in an external microphone. Where a high-end video camera is designed from the ground up to handle audio, the D7500 has limitations, as we'll discuss. So the conclusion? You can make beautiful videos with a D7500 if you take your time to learn the limitations of the camera. Let's go ahead and set up the camera for video. Video and still photography obviously have a lot in common, but they are more like cousins than siblings, and those differences translate into changes we need to make to the camera. First, we need to set all our settings to manual to get the best results. That means manual focus, manual exposure, manual white balance. Why? As I explained, the camera doesn't focus well or quickly in live view, and we must be in live view to shoot video, so we're stuck in manual focus. Remember to turn off autofocus on both the camera and the lens, and then use the ring on the camera to focus. You can use the Focus Assist tool to check focus before you hit record. You can magnify the image area to check. This becomes a really, really important tool in video. 
it's easy to think your image is in focus on that small screen, and then you look at it on your computer and realize, whoops, I focus behind my subject or in front of my subject. Press the magnify button, the button with the plus sign to magnify the image area. Press it again to magnify it more. Once you've adjusted or checked the focus, you can immediately hit the record button, the red button on top of the camera. The camera will automatically come out of the magnify mode. As a rule, when I'm shooting, I'm silently saying this mantra in my head. Frame, focus, record, count to 10, stop. I set up the shot, check and double check focus, hit record, hold the shot for around 10 seconds, stop, then move on to my next shot. Frame, focus, record, count to 10, stop, do it again. At its most basic level, shooting video is repeating these steps scores or hundreds or thousands of times until you have enough material to build your film. So why manual exposure? When shooting stills, we might use manual mode, but we might choose one of the auto settings. The camera is great because every moment it is calculating the light and exposure even as the situation changes. But let's think about that. Video is a series of photos taken quickly in succession. When you view them back, it looks like things are moving, like a flip book where you flip through the pages very quickly and things look like they are moving. In video, we are typically shooting at 24 or 30 frames in a second. So if you were to shoot in an auto exposure mode and the camera were recalculating the exposure for every single frame and things were changing even slightly, what would happen? Your video could easily flicker and move from light to dark. Not good and in fact really bad because there is no easy way to fix it. So we shoot in manual exposure and only adjust the exposure between shots if we need to. And white balance? Just read the explanation above. The camera is also calculating white balance all the time. You don't want to risk your color flickering or changing in the middle of a shot because someone in a green shirt walked into the frame, for example. Set your white balance. Better that it's slightly off but consistent, something we can fix in the editing, rather than constantly changing all the time, something we can't easily fix. Let's set the camera to shoot video. We need to set the image quality and size as well as adjust settings for sound. Set the switch on the back of the camera to the movie mode, that icon that looks like a movie camera from 1908. Then press the menu button on the back of the camera and navigate to the movie shooting menu. If someone has used the camera before you, you probably want to reset the menu using the two green buttons. You need to select frame size and frame rate. Size is the number of pixels in your video. Frame rate is the number of frames of video per second. The D7500 can shoot up to what is called 4K video. That's video that is 3,840 pixels wide by 2,160 pixels high. While 4K is becoming more common and we're starting to see televisions and monitors that can support 4K, it's still not the standard for viewing online or on your computer. Shooting 4K will mean very large files that need to be stored and edited. Your SD card will fill up quickly. If you need to shoot 4K for a particular project, then certainly go ahead and shoot it. But for the moment, you're probably better off shooting at the more conventional 1920 by 1080. This is what's called true HD or high definition video and still is the most common uh, high quality video setting being used right now. I would not recommend shooting in the smaller 1280 by 720 settings. The only advantage is that you could fit more video on your SD card, but I think it is worth investing in more storage to shoot the, the higher size, higher quality 1920 by 1080. We also have a choice of frame rates. In the United States, the standards are either 24 or 30 frames per second. I don't want to get into the complicated debate over one or the other, but 24 is the film standard, so filmmakers tend to use that setting. 30 frames per second is standard in the video world, so people with a video background tend towards that. The choice is mostly an aesthetic one, and feel free to Google the issue and get lost in the debate. What is more important is sticking to one or the other for your entire project. It makes things complicated in the editing if you mix frame rates. In Europe, they use 25 frames per second as a standard. If you live somewhere else in the world, you'll want to search around or ask, and we can find out the standard rate for your part of the world. 60 frames per second would be used to create smooth slow motion. You would shoot at 60 frames per second and then play it back at 30 or 24 or 25 frames per second. Set movie quality to high unless you're in a position where you have limited card or hard drive space. 
High quality will use up more space, but in return give you better image quality. And finally, select MP4 for the movie type. MP4 and MOV are pretty similar, but MP4 is more universal, while MOV was really designed for the Mac environment. We'll talk more in depth about microphones in the microphone tutorial, but you have a choice of auto, A, or manual. Auto offers the advantage of set it and forget it, but it creates problems as well. Imagine an interview where your subject grows quiet and, and that silence is important. In auto mode, your camera will try to raise the level of that quiet, tender moment, and you'll start to hear more background noise and more hiss, potentially ruining the moment, like, like this example. Notice how in the silence the background suddenly becomes noisy? That's because for this example I'm using the camera to record the audio, and I'm recording in auto mode, and each time I stop talking, the recorder tries to compensate by boosting the signal. On the other hand, if you're in an environment where the sound is changing all the time, it can be difficult if you're working alone to adjust the audio while also paying attention to everything else. As a good rule of thumb as you start out, I would do it this way. For interviews, where you're in control of the situation, use the manual settings and set the audio to the ideal level. When you're gathering what we call B-roll footage of your subject busy and active, for example, you could switch to auto so you'd have one less thing to worry about. Note that these settings apply whether you're using the built-in microphone or have attached an external mic, as we'll discuss in future videos. To change the audio, use the control wheel and go to auto or manual, and then move the wheel up and down to change the manual setting. You must press OK to confirm any change that you make. You can also access the movie settings from the main screen using the I button. It's much quicker as you make changes on the fly while working. Also, a big addition to the D7500 is that the screen is a touch screen. You can make most menu changes by touching the screen. It's, it's a very nice feature. I would leave frequency response to wide to capture the widest range of sounds and generally leave noise reduction off. You can always filter your audio in the editing, but you can't unfilter it. Once you set these settings, you're, you're ready to start filming. To shoot video, make sure the switch is set to video, and then press LV to enter live view. Note that when you're in live view, you have some display options. Press the small info button on the lower left to scroll through different displays. You can have the screen blank and free of distractions, display a grid so you can line up your composition more easily, display a histogram to check exposure, or show the virtual level to really check if your camera is level. And finally, you can display the audio levels. Most of the time, I want to see the audio levels while I'm working. I want to make sure that my audio is not blown out and distorted, or too soft to be heard, or just knowing that it's working. Ideally, the audio should never hit the red, but should occasionally touch the first or second yellow hash mark. You should always wear headphones as well, using the small headphone jack on the side of the camera. The combination of proper levels on the display and good sound in your ears will help guarantee that you come back with sound. It is incredibly depressing and frustrating to return from a shoot with no audio. Going back to reshoot just because you forgot to turn on the mic or a battery was dead or you just had the camera set improperly happens to everyone at some point. Try and watch and listen to your audio in the field so you can become the exception to that experience. A few other features that are important or new to the D7500. The camera offers in-camera image stabilization. If you must handhold the camera, this can smooth out some of the camera movement. Shaky video is a distraction and it usually looks amateurish, unless it's done for a reason or with intent. So if you want to, turn on image stabilization, go to the movie shooting menu, scroll down to electronic VR and turn it on. This is separate and in addition to the VR that your lens may have, and it's built into the camera body itself. In live view, you can now adjust ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Older Nikon models don't allow you to change aperture in live view, so this is really a great addition to the camera. We set exposure on the D7500 using the same tools we use for still photography. We use the exposure triangle, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, with one important difference. We want to use a shutter speed that makes our video look natural. If the shutter speed is too fast, it creates a choppy, stilted look. Think of the movie Saving Private Ryan. 
The rule is to set a shutter speed at twice your frame rate. So, if you shoot at 24 frames per second, you would shoot at a 50th of a second for a shutter speed. That's as close to a 148th as the camera can get. If you shoot at 30 frames per second, you'd set the camera to a 60th of a second. That means that we don't use shutter speed to control exposure when shooting video. We lock that shutter speed down at a 50th or a 60th of a second, and then use aperture and ISO to adjust exposure. We can change those settings before or even while we're recording and look at the camera through live view to see the results. Remember that if you change while you're recording, you're changing the exposure, and, and that can be a problem when you edit. So best to set that all up in advance. But if you need to make an adjustment on the fly, you can. You can see there is a lot to keep track of with video. There's a reason the credits at the end of a Hollywood film go on and on and on and on. And there's a reason even small video productions employ crews. Shooting video as a one-man or a one-woman band is possible for some kinds of videos, but it takes a lot of concentration to keep on top of all the technical issues and still have time and mental energy to be creative. And the only way to learn this is to do it. It's to practice over and over again. A quick review of what we've talked about in the video. Set your camera to manual everything. Focus, white balance, and exposure should be set manually. Set your camera's movie settings to 1080, 30p, or 24p. Set it to high quality, MP4. Set your microphone to manual for interviews and auto for less controlled situations. From there, use a tripod. It's annoying and frustrating, but it also teaches you discipline. And shaky video is the first sign of an amateur. Press the red button on top of the camera to start and stop shooting. Generally, it's better to shoot many short clips rather than have one long one. Move around, create visual variety, get in close, get tight shots. Think about how you'll connect shots together in a smooth way, something we'll look at as we talk about sequencing in other tutorials. The language of video is a series of shots edited together to convey what is happening and to compress time. The language of video allows us to show in a few seconds what would take many minutes in real life. Use a tripod and wear headphones. Get used to the fact that you'll look a little dorky. Always be anticipating what will happen next. Try to be there ahead of the action so you can capture its beginning. And be creative. Video thrives on variety. Get a mix of wide, medium, and tight shots, especially those tight shots. And practice. Once you're comfortable with the technical settings and the way your camera works, you can spend more time and more of your brain on storytelling. This was a long video about the technical settings of the camera, but the goal is all about the storytelling. You want your video to look and sound great, but it's also you can tell a story that captivates and moves your audience. And I said, it's no problem, man. You made me what I am. Remember, you told me I couldn't, and I told you I will one day. I knew I was black. I knew I was African-American, but I knew I wasn't the N-word.